This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, screening children for future psychosis. It could be that this is the time to potentially identify serious mental health concerns like schizophrenia. Psychotic-like experiences in children when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics, from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. They aren't necessarily the flashy chef or the adorable farmer. These are people who are doing things like making pallets, packing food, driving trucks. Exploring the many roles that keep the U.S. food system churning. Then... In most American cities, you're lucky to see a couple dozen stars on a good night. How light pollution obliterates the starry night. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in-depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Radio Health Journal and Viewpoints on your favorite radio station. And subscribe and listen anytime on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. Most young children have imaginary friends they play with. Kids routinely chat with people who aren't there, and no one thinks the child has a mental health issue. But sometimes those conversations persist into adolescence. That's when parents get worried. However, there may be more to it than we think. A study now shows that more than 17% of preteens in the U.S., kids between the age of 9 and 12, persistently hear, see, feel, or smell things that don't physically exist. Experts call these episodes psychotic-like experiences, or PLEs. So these are generally not clinical experiences. They're more like unusual thoughts and perceptual distortions. So they can be hearing or seeing things that aren't there, but they're not held with the full conviction that you would think of with hallucinations or delusions. That's Dr. Nicole Karcher, an instructor in the Department of Psychiatry at Washington University in St. Louis, and one of the lead researchers in a new study on PLEs funded by the National Institute of Mental Health. She says it's common to have occasional perceptual distortions or unusual thoughts, and that for most of us, they're fleeting and of no concern. Hearing your name in public, and then you realize that no one's calling your name, or feeling your phone vibrate and your phone's not actually vibrating. So you're having this sensation that's not based in reality. When we talk about unusual thoughts, we can talk about things like having thoughts that people are talking about you when there's no one really talking about you. Or thinking like a TV commercial is meant specifically for you, even though it's meant for everyone. You might feel like the newscaster's talking to you. It might be a fleeting thought that you have that the newscaster's talking to you. And then you think about it and you think, oh, but it's not true. On the other hand, psychotic-like experiences, whether in the form of unusual thoughts or physical sensations, are more persistent. You can have mild perceptual distortions, like just thinking things are different from the way they usually are. So brighter or duller or larger or smaller. You could hear unusual sounds like banging, clicking, hissing, or clapping in your ears. So it's something that people typically experience at least once or twice in their lifetime, but it's very unusual to be experiencing some of these things. So let's just pick one of them, like feeling like something is crawling on your skin. I'm sure a lot of us have felt like at some point in our life, a bug was crawling our skin and we looked down and there's no bug. But it would be very unusual to have that happen over the course of several years on a regular basis. Some kids who experience PLEs report that the episodes don't bother them. They don't suffer from cognitive impairment or low performance at school. However, it's different for kids with psychotic-like experiences that are persistent and distressing. They often have debilitating mental health issues. So suicidal ideation and behavior and depression, anxiety, they're showing lower functioning. So they're showing worse performance in school. They're showing lower cognition. And this is specifically coming out in areas like 
working memory. Karcher says no one has ever looked at PLEs in kids this young before. In fact, she says it may offer clues for how to prevent psychosis from developing in adults, a disorder that's notoriously challenging to treat. Most of the time, children are never examined for their risk for psychotic symptoms. That usually happens in late teens or early adulthood. Karcher believes results from her study indicate that intervention should take place during early adolescence. It's relatively new to start looking at these types of experiences in middle childhood. And one of the reasons it's, it's relatively new is there's, in some ways, people say, well, aren't we talking about just normative experiences? You know, in middle childhood, we know psychotic-like experiences are much more prevalent. And one of the reasons is they can't be associated with really normative experiences, like having an imaginary friend. But we know about this time it starts to become less normative. And what we're finding in our research is we can see that some of these youth are already experiencing lower grades and other mental health concerns, lower cognition, some alterations in brain metrics. And so there's increasing evidence that these experiences may be important markers of lower functioning and impairment in children as young as age nine. Earlier intervention would necessitate screening school-aged children for mental health issues, just as many schools and pediatricians already test for hearing and vision impairments. Would kids ages nine through 12 also answer questionnaires asking whether they experience PLEs? We think of psychotic experiences as being these very rare and always very scary experiences. And so I think if there was widespread screening, we would see that these are actually a bit more prevalent and often not associated with debilitating outcomes. And so if we could get screening efforts, and if we could identify a couple of questions, a couple of metrics that would identify those that are associated with long-term impairment, maybe we could kind of identify those children early on. And rather than maybe have kind of more intense interventions like antipsychotic medications or something like that, we could have low level early interventions. Karcher realizes it'll be an uphill battle to educate parents and communities to get them on board with an initiative like this. When we hear psychotic-like experiences or psychosis or psychotic disorder, I think a small red flag goes off in our mind where it's, uh uh-oh, that sounds like a really scary experience. I don't think people like thinking about being out of control of their thoughts. And so I think normalizing that, that these are generally pretty normal experiences that most people have had at least one of in their lifetime. And so identifying just like with physical health conditions, if we could find a way that before these experiences become distressing and persistent and go on for years and then are associated with a wealth of impairments and functioning and other mental health concerns, maybe we could change people's lives. Karcher says that the majority of kids who are labeled with PLEs today come from minority groups subjected to systemic racism, often living in poverty. She says that's an alarming finding that warrants further investigation. In the meantime, she says, mental health screening is a small price to pay to avoid adult psychosis. When PLEs progress to full threshold psychotic disorders, they're debilitating for both the individual experiencing them and for their loved ones. You can learn more about all of our guests by visiting our website at radiohealthjournal.org. Our writer producer this week is Polly Hansen. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. Radio Health Journal returns in just a moment. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. It's hard to believe that it's about redesigning buildings so that we can do something when they get destroyed. I mean, it's really far-fetched when you think about it. Weather disasters are increasing. How do we manage the cleanup? Then the link between obesity and cancer. When you look at the American population, a large proportion of the population qualifies to be at least overweight. And actually, it's again, 40% are obese. All that and more on Radio Health Journal.
And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal.